Yeah, to know the, the nature of our mind as being completely stable, always on, shining brightly as the basis of all experience, never going anywhere, always accessible, is just the greatest gift that I've ever received. And that's what happens in the Balanced View training. We get to see for ourselves the actual nature of our mind, the nature of reality. And um, that has to start with each of us having an instinctive recognition as to what that nature of mind is. To recognize for ourselves this sky-like openness that is the basis of who we are and everything that we experience. And the habit of trying to understand who we are, understand the world, understand um, identity, based on um, looking at our experience and thinking about our experience and describing our experience is so ingrained and it seems to be the only way that we have to understand what's going on and make sense of the world. To take a moment just to stop all of that describing, just to allow yourself to be exactly as you are, allow your thoughts just to do whatever they're doing, allow your feelings to do whatever they're doing, and your sensations just to sense whatever they're sensing, just to stop all of the descriptions, just for a moment, and recognize what remains when you stop describing. Recognize for yourself that there is an alertness, a cognizance, a capacity to know. There's an intelligence that is present naturally for you right now, that's hearing everything you're hearing, seeing everything you're seeing, experiencing everything you're experiencing. And that intelligence is always on. It never goes anywhere. All that happens is that we get so caught up in the descriptions about what's going on, about what we're thinking, feeling and sensing. In the Balanced View training we just call that data. We get so caught up in the descriptions about the data that we simply forget the basis of all of those data. The basis of our experience is this bright, clear, alert intelligence that is like a, like a cloudless sky. It doesn't have a limit or an edge or a boundary, and like the sky we can't actually say where it begins or ends. And to come to know this is the basis of our experience changes everything. Because the whole game of trying to make sense of everything based on ever-changing descriptions just relaxes. And, um, and in that relaxing, we have the most clear vantage on all of our description. Um, the metaphor that's sometimes used is that we go from being down in a valley where we're surrounded by these walls of descriptions. You know, everything we know, everything we think, all of our experience, everything we're experiencing right now, all of the descriptions about that, it's just this endless wall of description. And in a short moment of just stopping that description, just pausing for an instant and recognizing this basic state, this intelligence that is at the root, that is the, the essence, the cause of all of our experience, then immediately it's like being transported to a mountain top where we can see all of these valleys of data. We can see all of our descriptions and experience, but we're seeing them from this vantage of um, complete perceptual openness. And that gives us a clarity and an understanding that is impossible if all we're doing is focusing in on these walls of descriptions that seem to hem us in and limit us and really define who we are. Um, so there's a simple suggestion of just taking short moments of stopping the description and recognizing open intelligence whenever you naturally remember in a very relaxed way. And in this way the habit that we have of only focusing in on the descriptions and the confusion and the suffering and the difficulty in life that that causes is immediately transmuted into something beautiful. So for example with the fear of abandonment um, and if I really look deeply at my own experience um, going through life then yeah, I, can, I can look back and I can think about the times where you know I might have been abandoned or um, or the fear of it was there and was really present and really real and I can think back to those times and just know how 
how um, kind of terrifying that can be. But in this training and through the practice of short moments, I get to experience everything fully, as it is, without the need to avoid anything anymore. Um, and that's just in a short moment of allowing myself to feel everything from this position of just complete perceptual openness. And I can open up and allow myself to feel that in a way that I was never able to before. You know, when those really intense feelings came up, I had all kinds of strategies of dealing with them. Um, I would ignore them, I'd try and push them away, I'd try and replace them with more positive thoughts or um, different strategies for damping them down, for keeping them in place or distracting myself from those feelings. And instead to take a short moment to really allow myself to feel that fully whilst recognizing it as inseparable from open intelligence opens it up in a way that um, for me is really surprising because in something like the fear of abandonment what I find is such a heartfelt and personal connection with every other being on the planet that has ever felt that same fear and the confusion and the strange activities that flow from trying to manage that feeling, from trying to get rid of it, from trying to um, deal with it in all of these contrived ways that have a limited success. So I can damp it down, I can avoid it, I can do all of these things with it, but at some point it will return. And there is also the increasing confidence that when I recognize open intelligence as the basis of something like fear of abandonment or anything that I find really um, challenging or difficult, then what I'm actually discovering is the same stability that is the basis of all of these experiences and descriptions. And in that stability I find the courage to face everything fully. I see that once I recognize it as open intelligence, as the dynamic energy of open intelligence, just for one short moment, then again, immediately I'm transported to the top of the mountain. And rather than just having these walls of descriptions about my fear of abandonment or whatever the issue might be, I see all of those descriptions and the sensation itself like these valleys that are just laid out clearly, I can see the implications of the emphasis of these feelings and thoughts, how they may have played out in my life, how they might continue to play out, and also how they're playing out for every other person. The bizarre behavior, the um, painful things that people do and say to try and deal with this feeling, to try and avoid it, to try and get rid of it. and. Um, but then I actually also see deeper, I see into the reality of it that um, it's actually um, a recognition of the actual nature of reality because everything will disappear, <laughs> everything will leave me and that the fear of abandonment is actually completely justified <laughs> but from the position of open intelligence and the stability that is the basis and we know more and more directly then we can become comfortable with that too. Seeing that open intelligence never goes anywhere. All of my descriptions, everything that I hold dear, all of my relationships, even the ones that have been with me the whole of my life, will at some point disappear and go. So the more I become able to face everything from the vantage of open intelligence, the more I align myself with reality as it actually is. But rather than being something that's scary, there is an incredible openness that I discover at the basis of all of these fears. But only by facing them as they actually are. And um, in that is just complete freedom. Because I see that I do not have to be led around by any of my thoughts, emotions or sensations. I can include them all. And they all contribute to my capacity to be um, a loving, powerful, compassionate human being because I understand deeply what it means to be human and I understand deeply how that plays out for me and then simultaneously how that plays out for every other person. 
So that fear of abandonment becomes the connection with every other person on the planet. But only once I recognize it as open intelligence, as the dynamic energy of open intelligence, like um, the reflections in a crystal ball are the dynamic energy of the crystal ball. But the purity and the openness of the crystal ball isn't affected by any of its reflections. And this is the same relationship between open intelligence, what's looking through your eyes, what's listening to everything right now, and everything that you are experiencing, the content of your mind. We've been trained to deal with that content in a particular way, and here what we're seeing is, that, is there a different way that I can deal with it? And then all of the ideas about well, things like a soul traveling on this journey, or an individual traveling on this journey through life, again there is a perspective on that that is completely inclusive. We don't need to dismiss or um, ignore those beautiful way of understanding life, but it, it broadens into a much broader context. So that yes, of course, um, in some way I am an individual, but I see in a very instinctive way that actually, and it makes perfect logical sense too, I'm part of something much bigger. You know, we all know that. and. Um, a great example of that is, is nature, you know, the intelligence of nature. You know, we, we can break it down and we can talk about all the constituent parts and the different individual trees and plants and animals and ecosystems and, you know, we can break it down and speak about all the different bits of it, but actually what it is, is an indivisible whole. It's obvious in nature. Now, everything working in a complete harmonious display of indivisibility and it's so intricate you know you look down in the details of the brilliance of this this creativity but you can also zoom out and see the brilliance of the whole thing working together and it, you can keep zooming out as far as you want to go and you'll still only find indivisibility and so it's all inclusive, it includes all of the ideas that we have about ourselves as an individual, whether, whether that includes a soul or however you want to think about it, but by including them within open intelligence there is um, there, there's a clarity around all of that. I see that I can have all of those ideas and they can be very sweet and very beautiful. Um, but if I really want to understand the nature of who I am, it has to be from this vantage of this broadest possible context. I don't need to deny anything about my individuality, it's, it's amazing, it's incredible. But to recognize that all of those thoughts about me as an individual are also inseparable from this vastness of mind, that the, the same intelligence that we see in nature, guess what? We're also part of nature's intelligence. Now, we're not somehow different from any of the other beautiful birds or creatures running around. And what a strange idea to think that somehow that when we have a bad thought or that you know we feel lonely, that means that we're separate from all of this. I mean, that's actually a really strange place to, to live from. But that's what I was certainly trained to believe. And by relaxing those ideas, I actually recognize that I'd never left this indivisible expanse. I've always been part of it. And by stopping the descriptions just for an instant, it's like settling back into that vast expanse of complete openness. And then it's great, then I can include all of these data streams, I don't need to be afraid of them anymore. I see that what the trouble was and what caused the conflict and the suffering was not recognizing them as this dynamic energy. So if that was the difficulty, then the solution is always really simple. I just need to relax and recognize them for what they really are. They're also just this, um, well, they're also just another reflection in the crystal ball. It doesn't matter the description. Its fundamental nature is always exactly the same. It's always part of this indivisible expanse. It can't be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence. And the beauty of this training is in short moments you get to see whether that is true or not for yourself. And this is where the, the certainty and the assurance comes. 
when we see for ourselves that nothing about us, no thought, no emotion, no sensation, no experience, none of the data streams can be found to have an independent nature of their own. All of them are inseparable from the vast open intelligence in which and as which they occur. And that changes everything. Then we can really enjoy the data. Then we become able to be in the world in a way that is an expression of that openness and of that indivisibility. And that is to be of benefit to ourselves and everybody else and everything else. In the same way that everything in nature is of benefit to everything else in nature. It's all working together. So we just have to allow ourselves to relax and also see that we're part of that harmonious whole working together with everything else. The only reason we've missed that is the emphasis on our thoughts, emotions and sensations as having an independent nature. The only reason. So it's so simple, it's such a, a small shift in the way that we use our mind. But it has this incredibly profound effect and implication. Because first of all, we become comfortable with ourselves and everything that we think and feel. And when I'm comfortable with myself, guess what? I can be comfortable with other people. And when I'm comfortable with other people, then we begin to build a society that is actually capable of looking after ourselves and our beautiful planet, rather than being in competition and conflict with myself, with other people and the environment. So this is the importance of what we're, what we're practicing here. This is the implication. So it starts with something very, very simple, one short moment at a time, but wow, boom. What you're actually contributing to is, um, is incredibly vast and important. And thank you all for being here and for your interest and uh, just having the openness to explore it for yourself, to discover actually how incredible you've always been. <laughs>